Hello everyone, welcome to another Sunday uh, for online service. Um, uh, we are having a great time at least ministering for you guys who are staying home, being safe. I hope the school year is going well for you, um, where, wherever you are. Um, and uh, I'm a, my friend Bobby here is going to play guitar again today. Um, I love having him on, so it's going to be a fun time. Got some more worship and another message, and we will begin. <laughs> lost with a broken heart you pick me up and now I'm set apart from the ash I am born again forever safe in the Savior's hands you are more than my words could say I'll follow you Lord for all my days fix my eyes follow in your ways forever free in unending grace Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending Oh, oh, oh You are a light in us Nothing can take your place You are all we need Your love has set us free darkest night you let your love be the shining light breaking chains that were holding me you sent your son down and set me free everything of this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face and I will live that your will be done and I won't stop till your kingdom come Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending oh, 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 oh. You are alive in us Nothing can take your place You are all we need Your love has set us free I saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony this is my testimony Come together sons and daughters Bought with blood and washed in water Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God 
will finish what he started. Our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. His grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Oh, oh, oh. this is my testimony from death to life. His grace rewrote my story, I'll testify, by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified, this is my testimony, this is my testimony. Oh. If I'm not dead, then you're not done, greater things are still to come, oh I believe. What do you believe? I believe. Hi friends, welcome back to another week here online. I'm so excited, like always, that you've decided to join us right here um, to keep learning about David. Super fun, we're almost done. We're coming very quick to a close. We only have like two more after this, which is big tier. Um, but last week, David, we're going to do a little recap, right? Like previously in the life of David. <laughs> Anyways, um, David's fleeing from his home, right? The palace, because he had been overthrown by Absalom, his son. Not good. None of it. And Absalom had decided that he could be a better king than David, his dad. So he slowly, over a four-year period, won over the people of Israel. He did nice things for them. He listened to them, yada, yada, yada. He showed them how much better their lives could be if he were king and not David. And David, he just sat by and watched. He watched as his kingdom slowly went away into the hands of Absalom because David knew that this was the result of his own sin with Bathsheba, that this was the punishment, the consequence for what he had done years before. David's sin with Bathsheba, it set off this whole chain reaction, right? Like God set out all of these consequences that were to take place because of it. Your baby that you conceived with Bathsheba is going to die. He did. Your wives, they're going to be taken from you in public view. And they were. And finally, your family, David, is going to turn against you. And it did. Absalom is the result of that. So David's in this pit again. Like months ago, we talked about David being in the pit of despair. Well, he's back <laughs> in the same pit. He's desperate. He's overcome with his own guilt, and it's crushing him. And I'm sure he's mentally and emotionally in a very bad place. He's thinking, if I had only not done the thing, none of this would have happened. If I had only not sinned, this, 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 and this wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't be where I am. And then we jump into chapter 16 of 2 Samuel, and life just doesn't get much better for David. So. We're going to be in 16, verse 5. As King David came to Barum, a man came out from the village cursing him. It was Shmi, son of Gera, from the same clan as Saul's family. 
He threw stones at the king and the king's officers and all the mighty warriors who surrounded him. Get out of here, you murderer, you scoundrel, he shouted at David. The Lord is paying you back for all the bloodshed in Saul's clan. You stole his throne, and now the Lord has given it to your son, Absalom. At last you will taste some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. As David's on the run, <laughs> some guy <laughs> who is in some way related to Saul comes upon David. And he just starts hurling insults at him. And as if the words aren't enough, he starts literally throwing rocks at the man. He's telling him, get out of here. You're a murderer and God is paying you back for what you did to Saul, which is a lie. He says, you stole the throne from the house of Saul, another lie. And now God has given it to your son Absalom, which is another lie. And you're getting a taste of your own medicine. Ha 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 ha. That's what he's doing. Like this guy, this is Shmi, however you say it, is upset, like furious that David got to be king after Saul. He's so blinded by this rage he feels toward David that he can't help but kick the man when he's down. Like David's in a bad place, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And then along comes this random guy and he's like, well, as if you're not already feeling bad about yourself, I'm gonna just kick you one more time and we're gonna move on. This is not the great warm welcome that David may have been hoping for when he walked into this random town. But then, the next verse, one of David's own guys speaks up. This is what he says. Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Let me go over and cut off his head. Harsh. This man, he's like ready for a fight. He cannot believe that someone would have the audacity to say such terrible things about their king. And then we get David's response. No. Who asked your opinion? If the Lord has told him to curse me, who are you to stop him? Then David said to his servant, my own son is trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more reason to do so? Leave him alone. Let him curse me, for the Lord has told him to do it. And perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wronged and will bless me because of these curses today. So David and his men continued down the road, and Shmi kept pace with them on a nearby hillside, cursing and throwing stones and dirt at David. Talk about humility! You know the saying, like, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Well, David got them both. <laughs> he was called a murderer, a scoundrel, I'm sure other terrible things in Hebrew. And then the guy literally picks up dirt and stones and throws them at him. And David doesn't do anything. He is at rock bottom. Like, David is in the pit. And along comes this nobody to literally throw rocks and dirt at him while he calls him names. But instead of fighting back, David, he says, it's okay. God's got it. This is all in his plan. He never once got offended. He never once took it personally. He never even yelled. That's restraint. That's control. That is humility. And that is the power of God within a person. David has learned to fully submit to the will of God, no matter what that means for himself. Even if it's being called a, a murderer and a scoundrel and a liar and having things thrown at you, this is a great lesson in leadership. Because 
whether you know it or not or want to recognize it or not, you're all leading somebody. You're all leaders. And when you lead other people, you have to have a thick skin. You have to be able to take whatever harsh word or critique might be thrown at you because you won't be able to please everybody. And the most important person to please, it's God. And if you've done that, like David said, he's got it. He'll sort it all out. He'll figure it out later. I don't need to worry about the one-off random comment that some nobody made to me. But our story with Shmi doesn't stop here. We come across him again in chapter 19. And at this point, Absalom, he is dead, which is like kind of exciting for us. Um, so David's like won the battle and he defeated Absalom. And um, so David is king over Israel again, but not without like some damage having been done. You know, there's like division now, people who loved Absalom, people who love David. And so David's going around and he is trying to reunite the country, so to speak. So he's rebuilding relationships and bringing people back together. And he comes across the very same man that threw rocks at him not long before. So we're in chapter 19, verse 15. So the king, David, started back to Jerusalem. And when he arrived at the Jordan River, the people of Judah came to Gilgal to meet him and escort him across the river. Shmi, son of Gera, the man from Barum in Benjamin, hurried across with the men of Judah to welcome King David. A thousand other men from the tribe of Benjamin were with him, including Ziba, the chief servant of the house of Saul, and Ziba's 15 sons and 20 servants. And they all rushed down to the Jordan to meet the king. They crossed the shallows of the Jordan to bring the king's household across the river, helping him in any way they could. As the king was about to cross the river, Shmi fell down before him. My lord, the king, please forgive me, he pleaded. Forget the terrible thing your servant did when you left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. I know how much I sinned. That's why I've come here today, the very person in all of Israel to greet my lord, the king. Then the same servant who lashed out earlier said, you should die. You cursed the Lord's anointed king. Who asked your opinion, David said. Why have you become my adversary today? This is not a day for execution, for today I am once again the king of Israel. Then, turning to Shmi, David vowed, your life will be spared. Wow. I am blown away by the way David's conducting himself, the way he's presenting himself to the people. He is starting to act like the shepherd boy from Bethlehem who wanted nothing more than to show people who God is. And this is the perfect display of the love and mercy of God. Because Abisha, the servant, he's right. Shmi deserves to die for what he said about David. Like, law. That's how it works. But then Shmi says this one phrase. I know how much I've sinned. Not too long ago, David was in the same boat. He stood before Nathan and God and he uttered the words, I have sinned against the Lord. And what did God say back? You deserve to die. I'm not gonna kill you. Because your heart, David, is in the right place. David had every right to kill this man where he stood. He had every right to treat him as badly as he had treated David, but David remembered what it was like to be in that place. He remembered what it was like to do or say something that hurts another person. 
He remembers what it's like to have to come to terms with how you've messed up. And he remembers what it's like to own up to your own sin. But most importantly, David remembers what it's like to be forgiven. David knew what it meant to be a sinner, what it meant to be forgiven of the sin you committed. He knew the heartache of having done wrong, the cleansing feeling, the relief, the sense of burden lifted off of your shoulders that follows repentance and forgiveness. And it, so it was a no-brainer that David would forgive this man. That he would want to give them this amazing feeling of forgiveness. David, in this one instance, is a perfect picture of God. We sin. We mess up. We hurt God. And we deserve to die for those things. But the Gospel of John tells us that God so loved the world that God so loved you that he gave his one and only son. He gave up Jesus to be sent here to earth to live with us so that whoever believes in God won't perish, but have eternal life. He's given up his own son to take on the punishment of your sin in your place and he's given you eternal life with him instead. God forgives you even when you don't deserve it, even when you don't earn it, just because he loves you. No other reason. And when you experience that love and that forgiveness, there is instant relief. Instantly, you feel the burden lifted off of your shoulders. But we have to be like Shmi and David. We have to go to God, and in prayer, we have to own up to our sin. We have to recognize that we've messed up, and we have to apologize for it. We have to seek forgiveness before we can receive forgiveness. You have to seek forgiveness before you can receive forgiveness. Which means you got to go to God and own up to your mistake. And maybe some of you have been wondering what having a relationship with God is like. You know, you've been doing this thing for a while and, and you just don't know. But you're curious. And it sounds really good, right? Look at all the cool things David did because he was with God. If that's the case, now is the time to go to God. You pray and you own up to your mess up, to your sin, to your mistakes. You say you're sorry and then you ask for her, his forgiveness. You say that you want him to be a part of your life from now on. And if that's you, we love that. And I want you to pray this prayer bringing God into your life, of, of letting him change you from the inside out. Because it's a big step. This whole repentance, forgiveness thing is something we should do every time we mess up, every time we sin. But there's a first time for everything. And for some of you, this may be the first time you're doing this. So I want you to, to pray, say the words I say, or say them how you want but pray along with me. You ready? God, I am so sorry for the things I've done, for the ways I've messed up, for the ways I've hurt other people and the ways I've hurt you. It's not right and it's not okay. And I want, I want to be forgiven for the things I've done for the ways I've messed up, for the ways I've hurt people and I've hurt you. And I want you to be in charge of my life, to, to help me do the right thing and be the right kind of person, to show people who you are. I want you to come into my life and, and change me from the inside out so that I can do better tomorrow than I did today. In your name. 
Amen. So, if you prayed that for the first time or the third time, that's awesome. Repentance is so good. It's so exciting. But if you prayed it for the first time, you have just made the greatest decision of your life. Because now you get to be part of God's family and it's a fun place to be. We have really cool conversations and have, you know, really fun parties and and we get to do life together in a new way, in an exciting way. And so if that is you, let us know. I want to know. Because I want to throw a party for you because you're now a part of this cool family. And if you have prayed it for the third time or the fifth time or the seventh time, because honestly, you mess up every day, right? That's okay too. And it's worth celebrating as well. So let me know and we can have a party. Sound good? So with all that done and out of the way, may the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. I will see you right here next week. Bye guys. Oh, 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 oh,